I wanted to do a little follow-up to a couple of the stories that I've covered recently. It's thundering outside, so you may hear that in the background. Um, on the, the story that I did recently on Clancy Ray Atkins from Pikeville, Kentucky, in that story I mentioned that the investigating officer was Kentucky State Police Officer William Petrie who retired from the Kentucky State Police and then became a Floyd County Deputy Sheriff. And one year ago, uh, June of um, 2022, he was killed in the line of duty along with um, two other police officers and a canine uh, in a um, standoff with a gunman. And this took place in the Allen area of Floyd County, Kentucky. So I just wanted to mention that and uh, just say to those families that uh, we here in Eastern Kentucky, you know, remember you and respected the work that they did. It was announced yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, that the remains have been found, um, identified as those of Candy Green Gonzalez, who went missing in Floyd County in the Abbott Creek area in June of 2021. The only details that I can offer are what was announced on the news, is that some remains were found, that she had died very soon after the day she went missing. I don't know if they can pinpoint an exact time, but I think according to the medical examiner and those who examined the bones, examined the remains, is that she probably died not long after she went missing. Sadly, according to the reports that I've read, and there are other videos on YouTube that you can find more information. I, I'm getting my information from the local news that covered the story. They gave a very brief cover of the story last night. I'm not sure when the remains were discovered, but they had been sent to the medical examiner and um, tested to see if they were her remains tested the DNA of her, her mother and family members, and it was determined to be her remains. It remains to be seen the cause of death, and there's a very good possibility that they'll never know the cause of death. I'm not sure how much of her remains were found. I will continue to search as more comes out, because like I said, this just came out yesterday. So there hasn't been a whole lot of talk about it. The family announced it on one of the Candy Green um, Facebook pages. Her mother announced this wasn't the news that we had wanted. Let me find that and I'll read it. I'm sad to say we are no longer searching for Candy Gonzalez. Please be respectful and give us time to heal and process this tragic nightmare. This is devastating and definitely not the outcome we wanted. Please don't message us asking questions. This is now a death investigation. Any details available not jeopardizing the investigation will eventually be released. So, according to her mother who posted this, They're, they are investigating this, so maybe they know a little bit more than they're releasing to the public. Like she said, any details that would not jeopardize the investigation have yet to come out. It got me to thinking back to the video that is on YouTube. And if I can find it again, I will share a link to it. You can probably type in video of Candy Green Gonzalez. This was the day she went missing. She had left her home in the Abbott Creek area that she shared with her boyfriend. She was wearing a pair of sandals or flip-flops of some sort and those were later found in the creek. But she was, she had come up into the backyard of a family not far from her home. And there's a video of these people 
they posted this video. They posted it because to them, at the moment that this was going on, they they saw it as as humorous. They saw, but I will say this: the woman whose home it was, she did make the call to her mother. Candy asked, "Can I use your phone, or will you please call my mom?" And she called and got a voicemail and left a message. She was a little bit out of sorts on the video, so some people might have taken that as she was under the influence of something. I don't know if she was or not. I think she was scared, and I think she was hoping to hide somewhere until someone could find her, and uh, or she could get somewhere safe. There were searches for her, and they never found her remains, which is unusual because According to the reports, she was found over the hill, not too far, I don't know how far, but not a lot, not a huge long distance from where she was last seen. And on that video, what stuck out to me was these young men were telling her, she was running off down toward the creek, and they had their phone out recording it, and they were saying, you're going to get snake bit, there's snakes down there, Don't if you go down in there, you might get bit by a snake. Instead of going to her and saying, "Come, come and sit down. Come and have a seat. Let's let's find out what's going on. Let's let's get a hold of your mom. Let's get a hold of a friend who can come pick you up and help you out here." They had to put their get their phone out because they they thought this was going to turn out to be a funny clip to share with the friends on Facebook, and they they saw it as something humorous. Sadly, she went missing after that. She ran off into that creek. She very well may have gotten snake bit for all anybody knows. She lost her shoes, she, so she was barefoot, wearing a one-piece uh, short set, and no phone, no, you know, just out there alone. I don't know. But it's it's really sad. I, I said this on my previous video that I made about her. It's really sad that these people didn't take into consideration that maybe her behavior wasn't drug-related and maybe it was fear and maybe they could have stopped what happened to her by just offering her a little kindness and, and compassion and a seat on the back porch. You know, long enough to reach her mom, uh, long enough to reach somebody to give her a ride. I'm not blaming them, but I'm saying they didn't help the situation at all, you know. So, anyway, that's just my own opinion about it. Some people believe that she probably wouldn't have gotten much help anyway due to the fact that the man she lived with was the son of a law enforcement person who, who I think at one time, I'm pretty sure, was the sheriff of Floyd County and had been um, kind of dismissed or voted out due to the fact that he'd gotten a DUI while he was sheriff. But at one time, he had been the president of the Sheriff's Association. He was still, you know, in contact with these people. And a lot of people believe that Maybe she was afraid to call the police because she didn't really think that they were going to do much of anything to help her because of his connections. I don't know. So I'll move on from that. I just wanted to give a little update about that. And as time, as more information comes out, I will update again. I just, I'll just say that her remains have been identified and the police are still investigating this. The next story that I want to give an update about is that of Amber Spradlin, who I made a video about very recently. This was a young woman who was murdered in Floyd County, Kentucky, just around June the 18th, of just within the last 10, 11 days. Today, the family and uh, their lawyers held a press conference you can find this on Mountaintop News on Facebook. I'm sure it's on the Justice for Amber uh, Facebook page as well. 
they gave some de- the 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 aunt, the cousin rather excuse me the cousin gave some details that I don't know if the public had heard about or not. I had not heard about. I heard some rumors and some talk that it was more than just a simple stabbing, and it turns out that that was the case. If you don't want to hear the details of this, because it's pretty gruesome, if you have children around, you might want to consider, you know, sending them out of the room, because this is kind of gruesome. According to her cousin, and I guess they got this report from the uh, coroner, the medical examiner, she was stabbed over 11 times. And she wasn't just stabbed, but her throat had been slit so deeply that it almost completely uh, decapitated her. She had been stabbed directly through her throat at her voice box. And stabbed so deeply through her throat that the knife went all the way through. She was also stabbed underneath her cheekbone in an upward motion so that the knife blade went up behind her eyeball and broke off inside of her head. This is, I'm sure she had defensive wounds. They said that it was was evident that she had fought. This was a woman who was 4 foot 11. She was 39 years old. According to her cousin, she had um, health problems. She was a little bit on the heavier side, so I, I mean, I don't want to say that that was a call, you know, a reason why she couldn't fight back because it's evident that, according to what the cousin said in this press conference, that she did put up a fight. According to some people, it was reported that there was so much blood at the scene that when they started to take the forensics that they determined that it wasn't just her blood, that there was other blood besides hers. So they were going to try to find out whose blood this was. Now, according to the other reports, there were six people at the house that night. And since it's been made public and it's been publicly talked about, I will say the name of the person whose home this took place in was a Dr. Mark McKinney who's a local dentist in Floyd County. And he's also part owner of the brick house where Amber worked. There was another friend there that night named Roy Kidd, who was supposed to have been Amber's lifelong friend. They'd known each other for many years. They had left the brick house that night and ended up at another location called the Seasons Inn. And from there, they ended up at this doctor's house. This is Dr. Mark McKinney. Son was also there that night. I don't know anything about his son. I don't know his son's age. I'm assuming that he's an adult. So we know of four people that were there. Amber, the doctor, his son, and this friend Roy Kidd. I do not know the other two. I don't know if they were both male or if there were females in this group. This is what we know so far. This is what's been talked about so far, that there were six people there. I haven't heard any other names said other than those. But no arrests have been made. And I understand from the press conference that the lawyer, he was really getting into the whole 911 system, the whole broken 911 system and why calls were not responded to. According to what I can find out, one at least one 911 call was made, and they do believe it was made from Amber's phone. Whether it was her that made the call, I haven't heard if the call, I'm sure the call was recorded. All 911 calls are recorded. So that's what we know so far. Um, no arrests have been made, and the reason being is that they want to investigate to find out who actually wielded the knife. I I believe that this person is 
is covered, probably covered in cuts, or at least some cuts to their hands. Being that there were blood, blood was mixed in with Amber's blood that was not hers. So it would make sense that the person holding the knife, if they're, if they're stabbing her in such a violent manner that they go to the extreme to cut her throat so deeply, stab her through the face. If Amber's fighting back, it's possible that this person cut their own hands. Have they taken all of these other five people in and examined their bodies? We all remember the whole O.J. Simpson deal with his finger having this deep gash. And he claimed that he cut himself he cut himself in some other way. Um, the public is outraged that nobody has been arrested. And I know the lawyers are saying we don't want to arrest the wrong person and put them char put charges against them and it get thrown out of court because it was the wrong person. The woman died in a violent attack inside this man's home. This is where her remains were found. They know that there were at least five other people there that night. The fact that this took place and was this violent and this girl was fighting this hard says that somebody saw or heard something. At, you know, you would think at least one person saw or heard something. And if this one man was supposed to have been her very good lifelong friend, has he come forward and spoken? Has he gone to the police with his what he has to say about it, or is he a suspect? I would say that everybody there that night was a suspect until proven otherwise. Um, her cousin shared this, and nobody else has come out with this. You know, she did this because there's not enough outrage here. I mean, yes, the public, the people following this are upset and, and angry that this is a doctor who's been allowed to go about his daily business. This is a, a group of people who have been allowed to go about their daily business since this happened. And the 911 center and the problems with 911 aside, someone said the reason she died was because of 911. No, the reason she died is because someone at that home that night, for whatever reason, picked up a knife and began to violently stab her. They're saying if 911 had responded, her life might have been spared. That's it's it's possible. It's possible some the police could have gotten there in time to spare her life. But the person who picked up that knife that night needs to be in jail. Premeditated murder, in my opinion, because in the amount of time it takes you to pick up a knife and pull it back one time to stab somebody. It, you know, you have enough time to think about it and to change your mind, so. But I just wanted, that's that's also my own personal opinion. And I will leave on that note, and I just want to say thanks to everyone for listening to me give my little opinions and what little bit of actual update, you know, information I can share. I appreciate everybody for watching. I know... A lot of this is my own opinion and some people may disagree. Thanks for watching.